Welcome to our program on Kardec Radio. Hello, dear friends, and welcome to Kardec Radio, and welcome to another daily prayer program. What a blessing, friends, to be here together with one another in an opportunity to pray. Prayer is so important, is the foundation, is our communication with God. And we have several accounts on Emmanuel's books, on Andrea Luis's books, about the power of prayer. Something that is, seems so simple in our side, but if we do it with intention, if we do it with our hearts open, with true, true feelings, it might be a short prayer, doesn't need to be a long prayer. It can be sometimes a thought that we meet, but that is already sufficient to connect a heartfelt prayer, connect us with the very, very high spirits. And in Andrea Luis's books, we get to know that all prayers, those who are heartfelt play, prayers, they are answered because they go up, they travel up to the highest realms. And the mentor spirits who are so loving and kind, our protector spirits, they come and they help not only us, but the whole network, the whole network that is connected with us that needs to be helped in order for us or those who we are praying for to be helped. So the mercy of God, dear friends, don't have limit. So let us believe in the power of prayer and let us be more diligent in do this exercise more often. And if you don't want to pray by yourself, if you don't know how to pray, that's why we're here at Kardec Radio so that we can do it together. We are practicing and learning together. So how can you do it? How can you do it in your home? If you do the gospel at home or the Jesus in the home, it's really, really simple. You can select a book, an inspirational book with messages. You can read a message. So you start with an initial prayer. You read a message. You make some remarks, maybe with some family members, loved ones who are with you or by yourself. There are no problem to do the God at home meetings by yourself. And then you close with a final prayer. And the important thing, friends, if you're doing this God at home or gospel at home meetings, is that we choose a day of the week. And it's important that we keep it constant so that the mentors know when to come. So choose a day of the week in a time that it is easy for you and for your family members that fits in your schedule and keep it consistent because it will create a network and it can be as short as 10 minutes and as long as an hour and that moment is precious but here in our daily prayer program we can do it together and we have the daily prayers every day at 6 p.m eastern standard time you can join us and we can do this exercise together. So we welcome everyone, welcome all the friends who are here. So we're gonna start, start with our initial prayer. And remember also to gather a glass of water or a cup of water or a bottle of water, put it next to you. And during these moments, the mentors, the spirit mentors, the guardian angels, they'll be there, they will be applying the medicine that we need. And then later on, we drink the water, we distribute to our family members. We can even water our plants, give it to our pets, but definitely nourish ourselves, our souls. So shall we friends, let us start with our initial prayer. So let us close our eyes. 
let us for a few moments stop what we're doing we know we have busy lives and we are always multitasking but let us for a few moments connect with our guardian angels and with our loving father Thank you so much, Father, for the opportunity to be here, to be connected with one another in this daily prayer program. You know, Father, what we need at this moment. The difficulties, the challenges of the way. You know our hearts has no one else And because of that, dear Father, we put ourselves at your feet. We trust you, Father. And we know that everything, there is a purpose, there is a reason. And then your mercy is unmanageable. We cannot even picture or understand yet the extent of your love, of our understanding. But we are starting to wake up, Father, to feel. Because for many lives, we thought that we had the power over our lives. But now we see that we are part of your creation. You govern our lives. And we trust you. We trust on your designs. Let us feel and be renewed in this trust and love at this moment. Feeling comforted. We also pray, dear Father, that during this moment, those that need the most, our loved ones in both realms, friends and family members, those who are sick of the physical and spiritual bodies, those who need a helping hand at this moment, those who feel lost and abandoned, and even those who are working in the front lines of this pandemic, in hospitals, clinics, those who work and wake up every day so that we can have food at our tables, that we can have a roof on our heads, Thank you so much, Father, because you give us so much and we have so much to be grateful for. And we ask your permission to open this daily prayer moments of tonight. And so be it. So friends, tonight we're reading a message from The Spiritus Magazine. If you're not familiar with The Spiritus Magazine, we invite you. You can visit the website, spiritusmagazine.org, or download the app for free on your phone, in the Apple Store, in the Google Play Store, and you can read in the touch of your fingers. You can read this are, is a present in our life. This magazine is a blessing. And today we're reading from the issue that was just released yesterday. So it's hot off the press. Yes, issue number 53. It's called the Spiritus Therapeutics. That's the name, the title of this issue. So you can read beautiful message, many articles, and it's there in English, which is for us that speak 
English. It's a blessing to have this, this beautiful teachings in English and for free. So go there, visit it, the website spiritismagazine.org or .com or the Spiritus Magazine on your phone. And in this issue number 53, we're going to read a message titled, Our Affective Field. This is a message that was psychographed by Chico Xavier, by the spirit Mimi, and is in the book in Portuguese titled, Deus Aguarda. In English, God Awaits. is a book that has not been published yet, but it was, this message was, translated by the team at Kardec Radio, the team of the Spiritist Magazine, and you can read it in English in this latest issue of the Spiritist Magazine. So let, the, let us read this message together, and then we'll make a few remarks. So our affective field, and Mimi tells us, Practice kindness to everyone you encounter, but especially toward your loved ones that cannot fulfill the tasks that they committed to. This friend resisted for a long time a certain type of temptation. However, without the strength to guard the warnings of the conscience, sin, enter a long maze of remorse of which he did not know how to find a way out. Who, companion, plead hundreds of times for protection and understanding. However, without finding safety on the ground she walked on, slipped into strange attitudes which made her go mad. Another one wanted to enjoy a moment of happiness by escaping personal commitments. However, he found himself trapped in a network of lamentable deceptions, inducing beloved souls to rebellion and suffering. Yet another, with the pretext of rest and entertainment, end up in a bleak cliff of repentance and loneliness. Silence, bless, and follow your own pathway, even in front of loved ones involved in calamities of the soul. Love them as they are and continue on the road ahead with the certainty that others, just like us, continue living to the fullest supported by God's love and wisdom. Wow, friend, may me always bring us beautiful messages that goes straight to our hearts, our affected field. And tonight she's talking to us about the loved ones, about those closest to us, but sometimes those who are the most difficult for us to interact in our daily basis. Because we know in Spiritism that there's a reason why we reincarnate in a certain family, that we have the parents that we have, the siblings that we have, and then we construct the family. We encounter those who we have sometimes to reconcile. So they enter our families and become part of our families. So she's saying tonight, reminding us to practice kindness to everyone, but especially towards the loved ones. So before we go to some of the examples that Mimi brings to us, let us reflect on this together, friends, an opportunity for us to bring this close to our hearts. How is our kindness, our understanding to those closest to us, to our loved ones? If you have a scale 
from zero to 10. Zero has, we're doing really, really, really bad. We're not kind and understanding at all. And 10 has, we're doing great. We're super kind, super loving like Jesus, right? Jesus is our model. So how are we in this spectrum? And I am doing the same exercise. I am asking myself, where do I fall in the scale? So it's an exercise for all of us to reflect. And why, friends? Why is that so important, right? Isn't it interesting when we stop and think about what is happening in our planet, this pandemic, and we see that the way for us to protect ourselves from the pandemic is what is the, the guidelines? Is stay at home, right? Stay at home with your family members. So the pandemic is actually giving us a message that we need to work in our homes. The focus needs to work in our homes because for how many decades, uh, centuries, right, friends, we are what? We're worried about work, about the responsibilities outside of the home, and we neglect those who are closest to us. So the pandemic is a calling for all of us to change the lens and pay attention to those who are the closest to, one, to us and work on those relationships. And she gives us many examples. Those who fall into temptations, who enter, as she says, maybe in the maze of remorse, right? Those family members who choose a certain pathway and they might see it or not, these choices that they're making and they become involved in this feeling, but not the remorse that help us move forward, but in the negativity, right? In, 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 in that in that field that sometimes when we speak to someone and they are, especially right now with the pandemic, so down, right? Looking at the negative instead of being optimistic and focusing on the good, right? Those who she says here, who have slipped into strange attitudes, that they go mad, yes, sometimes mad in the sense of what we understand about mad, but mad in a way that they go to a pathway that is really against God's law. And they ask for protection and understanding, but their choices, their attitudes are different. Those who they say they want to be happy, but they do what? They fall into the network of lamentable deceptions inducing souls to rebellion and suffering. Those who are closest to us who are rebel or suffering, how many people now are going through this pandemic and we need to help them because instead of accepting and understanding and regulating their lives, they are rebel, right? How come this is happening? I want to do this. I want to go to this party. I want to have this. Why do I have to put my life on hold because of the pandemic? How many people are saying that, right? Why do I have to adjust my life because of a pandemic when the whole planet's telling us now is not the time. It's not the time for that trip, for that party, for that gathering. Let us focus on our families. That is the message that this pandemic in several scholars in spiritism are bringing us these reminders that it's a call for all of us. So what do we do with those members who are rebelled, right? Or she gives another example, those who end up in the cliff of repentance and loneliness, those who feel alone and abandoned, right? How can we reach out to them? Yes, those who are sometimes physically alone, but how many 
might be in a family, a big family, or a house full of people, but they still feel alone. They still feel abandoned in their hearts, right? So how can we extend our happiness? Because sometimes those who are suffering, actually most of the time, those who are suffering are those close to us, right? We see what is happening in the world and we're like, I want to help. I want to do this. I want to reach out. But let us start with those close to us. How can we reach out and help those in our closest network? And how can we do it? Well, she says, first, silence. Wow. Isn't that interesting, friends? From all the recommendations that Mimi can give to us, she says, silence. That is so much, so interesting. There's so much for us to reflect. Why silent? It's because, and these are we making our take on it, right? There are many and we need to reflect on it, but maybe it's because sometimes we are the ones saying, but you should, why do you think this way? Don't you see? You should go this way. This is because. Or we see people going through difficulties and we say, ha, huh, why would you expect, right? If you've done this, that, and the other, what would you expect, right? How many times we say that? So she's saying, silence. So sometimes, friend, silence, instead of getting into the battles, the verbal battles, the mental battle, battles, which are sometimes even more frequently than the verbal battle. So let us silence, silence the words, but silence in our reflections, our minds. Because who are we, friends? Who are we to say? We, if we were in their shoes, what tell us that we would do different? Or what tells us that in the past, maybe right now we, we don't fall into those uh, traps, but in the past, we were probably the ones there. And if we're if we are incarnated, reincarnated with those loved ones, it is probably because in the past we were the one pushing them, pushing us and pushing them to do it. So if this time we are awakened, it's because we have a purpose to be in that family to pull those members up. So let us not judge. Let us understand, so let us silence our hearts, our minds, our words, and let us do what? Let us bless. And she says, let, let them follow their own path. How many times we want to interfere on people's lives, right? We're not saying we're not going to warn them, we're not going to share, we're going to help but we're not going to impose, right? It's my way or the highway, right? No, we have our free will. It's the law of justice. The law of justice, we can read more about the law of justice in the Spirit's book. And so interesting because Kardec brings to us the law of justice when we respect others' free will. So let us apply the law of justice, but let us do what? Let us love them. Love them as they are. That is the most important thing, friends. The mentors of Kardec Radio the other day were giving us a beautiful exercise. When we look at someone, think about a ruler, right? I'm going to use my phone. If we think I don't have a ruler right now, but we, if we think has a ruler, right? We are, when we encounter people, we might see them right here. But the mentors recommend us, let us look at them as if they were already here. They're moving forward like a ruler, right? From zero to 10. So instead of focus on the negative, on what they are today, let us remember ourselves that they are, like we are, children of God. We are destined to progress. So let us look at them ahead. Let us push to look at them. Maybe years from now or reincarnations from now, they will progress like us, like we all will do. So let us focus on that. 
and let us continue loving them because the road ahead with the certainty that are many others that continue living supported by God's love and wisdom. So tonight, friends, the message is to love. Love the loved ones, those close to us. Love them the way that they are. Not focus on the negative. Focus on their mortal spirits that they are. Not judging, understanding and helping, and how is the very first law above all laws, the law of just love and charity. Let us apply this law, starting first and foremost with those loved ones close to us. So with this powerful message tonight by Mene, we're going to end our program with our final prayer. So. We invite you, friends, to join us in so we can pray together for one another. Dear loving God, thank you so much, Father. What a blessing this message. By our dear Mimi through Chico Xavier. Yesterday, as we celebrated the birthday of Chico Xavier, this blessed soul that reincarnated among us and through his loving hands, we have access to messages like the one today by Mimi, true healings for our souls. We pray tonight, Father, for our loved ones, those who you have placed in our lives, has our parents, has our brothers and sisters, grandparents, husband or wife, children, grandchildren, uncles and aunts, those in our family circle. You know the reason for everything, Father. You know why. So let us tonight practice this exercise by Mimi. Kindness in the home. Loving people as they are, not focusing on their shortcomings, but looking at them as immortal spirits. Spirits who are progressing like all of us. Let us silence our minds, our judgments, the harsh words and the actions. Let us understand one another and bring to our homes and to the homes of our loved ones patience, understanding, kindness, and above all, Father, bring us love. Master Jesus has the guiding mother in our lives. Show to us that love, love conquers everything. And through love, we can surpass the most difficult challenges in life. Bless, Father, all those who at this moment are facing battles within their homes, physical and mental battles. Bless them, sending your messengers to provide peace, understanding, and most of all, to give them the support that they need to fulfill their reincarnatory plan, to get rid of the shadows of the past, focusing on the beautiful future that awaits all of us. With much gratitude in our hearts, we ask your permission to close this daily prayer moments of tonight. 
and so be it. Thank you, friends, for joining us here at Kardec Radio, because here we're always nourishing our souls. If you have any questions, please write to us at kardecradio at gmail.com or leave us a comment here in this program. We will be praying for all of you, friends. Feel our embrace and we invite you to join us here tomorrow for another daily prayer program. We'll see you soon, friends. Bye-bye.